Jessica Dietrich, but first we're going to be bringing out uh, an author I'm a big fan of. His name is Seamus McGillicuddy. <laughs> so you might need a little something to uh, jump over for later. <laughs> oh, alright. A uh, few of those facts are correct, but I will use, I'll use this and just put it in the desk. Convenient? Yes, yeah, totally convenient. Uh, so how have you been? <laughs> I've been good. Now, tell me what brought you here to Los Angeles. <laughs> Professionally, or is it just a yearly thing? Or no, I live here. This is my summer? job. You are at my job right now, which mm -hmm. is this show. Uh, and is the job what brought you here in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, grew up, I grew up in the States. Oh, he grew up in the States. I'm not listening, usually. <laughs> Uh, now, Seamus, with him. You're, uh, <laughs> he's, he's another famous author. You've, you've never met uh, Jordan? No, yeah, I've yeah. met him. I, uh... You just want to know what's with him. Right, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, old boy, I rather enjoy your works, did you say? I'm fond of yours myself. We met last year. <laughs> I had a sissy scotch. <laughs> I'd say that was some sort of insult, but rather your breath is so enchanting that I can't take offense. <laughs> <laughs> you smell like a Piccadilly haberdashery. <laughs> <laughs> the boys I'm emitting from me gums, you see I've had rotten tooth syndrome. <laughs> I can fix that, you know, I used to be a dental man. <laughs> About. Well, I am too. It's book week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, most late night shows rarely book authors, let alone two of them on the same night. But uh, <laughs> now, your book uh, is a, is a uh, is a memoir, right? It's, it's about growing up. Right? Memoir. It's pronounced memoir. <laughs> How do you say it? Memoir. Yeah. Okay. Like, like regular people do. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it regular people. <laughs> memoir. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, so, uh, you say it. Memoir. Now you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, about your book. I was going to say we should move... Oh, uh, you just get that. <laughs> it's it's huge. huge. <laughs> <laughs> Conversational stoplight. No. <laughs> uh, I wrote a novel, a uh, book, a memoir. A So, uh, well, he's not much of an interviewer. He's an <laughs> absolute log, you see. He's dead. <laughs> says the conversational stoplight. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 these Yanks, you know, they've got a bit of a chapped mouth syndrome. <laughs> well, you know, they come from your lines. My lines or my loins? <laughs> <laughs> or my loins? <laughs> 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 so, what, what is this book about? Why the book you is about, you know, uh, there is a, uh, Fred McCart, rest his soul, brilliant man, sweetheart of a guy, totally lying. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was he lying about? 
Well, the fact that he writes a book about miserable Ireland this and how terrible it was that and being depressed and sick and ill and people dying. Sure, it's all that, but I had a nice childhood. And uh, all 52 of my years is documented in that book. Oh yeah, we've got a copy of your all book right here. All 52 of them. <laughs> this is about your whole life. I expect a bigger laugh. But... <laughs> I inspected the entire back seat of my car for this size book. And I found something thinner out of brought. It's absolutely aftershock by Robert Reich. Well, we've broken the fourth wall of reality now. Well, we're on to the fifth and sixth, don't you? Uh. from no, uh, we can Robert Reich's Aftershock. No, we can still <laughs> pretend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just a little bit about your childhood? Well, I will. Uh, the underlying problem, said me father, under his breath like that. <laughs> He's absolutely not lying. <laughs> Was it around 1951, I met your mother and had all these kids. <laughs> he told me as he flicked cigarette butts along with his uncle uh, and my uncle at me, standing shirtless, dripping wet after shoveling snow. <laughs> your mother, Margaret, who was a prostitute, <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> said that uh, who actually worked she worked at a utility uh, was, uh, was a known tramp around the office and oftentimes found to be pregnant than not pregnant <laughs> pregnant than not pregnant <laughs> And was the uh, re result of an unreputable man who spoke the old language and a fat mouse of a woman <laughs> named, named Kimberbell. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sorry? Kimberbell. My great grandmother's Kimber name. My grandmother's name is Kimberbell. Who is was that Bill or Bell? Bell. Kimberbell. Bill. Oh, now you've got what he's got. He has a problem with pronunciation. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say anything, but being the British calling people out all the time, that's what you do. So, my father. Uh, <laughs> that sounded insulting. <laughs> we always keep a stiff upper lip, but I feel. As I have him. Well, I'm trembling, you see. <laughs> I'll be a glass of economics. <laughs> oh, true. Why down? Policymakers obsess about the financial economy instead of the real one. And you wrote this? Yes. Well, me and Robert Reich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you ghost wrote it for him. I uh, was there in the room. And, uh, but this is a quote from me father in regard to me, Aunt Hildegain, who was part Norwegian, who said, and I quote in regard to me Aunt, this sucker could go down. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Seamus, that is, uh, uh, we're all really looking forward to your book coming out. Uh, it's coming out only in Ireland, right? Uh, yes. So, uh, not exactly sure why you were booked on this program, which does not air there. Well, we're looking to get some interest here in the United States. Oh, okay, good. We've got the tallest man in my town of Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have the tallest man in your town? The tallest man in our town of Kildare is 5'9". Is <laughs> well, I tell you, he's the biggest fella you've ever seen. <laughs> they call him Handsome Pate. That's not his name, so I don't know why we call him I think it's because he's Pate. I see it. He's a pale Pate. <laughs> Should be Hugh. And what do you... What is he? <laughs> Oh, nothing. We just, we have him. So we're trying to figure out how we can get this strapping 5'9 man onto a plane, for one thing. And then come over here and maybe, you know, blow up some balloons or get those 
inflatable thingies to do this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that part of it? <laughs> well, that would be we'd sell books right there and people would stop on the street and go, wow, what the daft hell is going on over there? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you've got to teach a market. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, you, you are both a delight. Uh, uh, I want to... <laughs> That's all right. It's mo mo Mokley Rykra. What? Mokley <laughs> Rykra. Don't you know? <laughs> what is that? I speak the old tongue. It's, yeah, your accent's changed a lot. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I dare you say it's an answer? absolute treasure. Please <laughs> <laughs> never say this again because you've made me very upset. <laughs> 